Our second scripture reading, our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. We've been working our way through this gospel today in chapter 17, beginning with the 11th verse here, the Word of God. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. We have many unique qualities given the area, the region of the country in which we live, but one that is rather special for us, especially as you move east of Morristown toward the city and then you're in the city, uh, one special quality is it's very difficult if you're driving somewhere to turn around. Have you ever noticed that if you want to go back from the direction you've come from, if you want to turn around, it is very difficult in our area to execute that easily. About a month ago, Ann and I were in lower Manhattan, and we wanted to turn around. And we had the address in our phone mapping system. And it was very interesting because it was almost as if the phone was trying to tell us, you can't turn around here. It, it just kept rerouting us. We would drive a few feet, and it would do another route, and then another route, and it kept bouncing back and forth. And we almost got this sense that it wanted us to realize, hey, you can't turn around and go back that direction. You know, when you're in the city, it's a matter of one-way streets. Maybe you can't make a turn or a left turn on certain streets. You have gridlock. I'm sure you've been in a situation in our general area where maybe you want to get over and start to execute a turn or move yourself back around, but you can't even get through the traffic to get over there. And then, of course, there's just streets that are closed. It's, it's difficult to turn yourself around. But, of course, we know that at a much deeper level within our lives. It's difficult to execute a turn, to turn yourself in a very different direction. We travel certain routes in our lives, certain paths on our each individual journeys, and what begins to happen is we create ruts that we travel in. Uh, We travel in these same ruts, and they're developed through our own experience. They're developed because of the knowledge we have, the belief system we have. And so we travel, we're going one direction, and we start cutting out those ruts. And even if we take out our spiritual GPS and we want to maybe try a different direction, go a different way, we enter it in, and it starts to get very confused. It's, it's so deep within these ruts, just like in the city. You can be so deep within the buildings that you don't have, it seems, very good reception. And so we're trying to maybe enter a different way in, but it keeps telling us, no, you can't, you can't turn. You, you just are going to have to keep going the this, this same direction in these, these ruts that you have cut for yourselves. And, and our soul memory. Our soul muscle memory also confirms that. It's, it's easy to keep going the same way that we've been going. It's, it's hard to turn around and think of going some other direction. These few verses that are 
here in chapter 17 of Luke are about turning around. They're about understanding that while we recognize some things in our lives, do we truly acknowledge them? Do we want to take them within our lives? Do we want to claim knowledge of them in such a way that it causes us to be willing to turn around and to recognize what is outside of ourselves? That's, that's what this passage is all about. It's about a formula for turning around. See, there were ten leopards who recognized the power that Jesus had. They'd heard about Jesus, and they'd recognized that he had power that was beyond this world, or what we normally would understand in our human temporal lives. And so they yelled out to Jesus. And sure enough, they experienced this healing They just went off on their ways. But there was one who understood this at a deeper level. He turned, even though he'd recognized the power of Jesus, he turned his life, he turned himself around, and he went to Jesus, and he acknowledged who Jesus was. He acknowledged that there was power that has come from outside what is normally understood. Power that's come from outside the normal confines of human understanding. And he acknowledged, he he knew what this was about. And he wanted to come and he wanted to be with Jesus. And then Jesus says this fascinating statement. See, the others had been made clean on the outside, their skin. But Jesus says, you know what? Your faith has completed, has completed the healing within your life. Your faith has completed the healing process. See, we, we can recognize the power of Jesus, and we can start to have an understanding, and maybe even start to see some things happen within our lives, but yet we still travel in those same patterns and ruts. But the turning, the acknowledging to come before Jesus is where the wholeness and the completion comes to our lives. We've been working our way through Luke, and and Luke is a very interesting gospel because there is one strong chord, one strong theme that runs through the gospel of Luke that connects these stories and the parables that are only found in the gospel of Luke. And it really is best understood if you think of the transfiguration. I'm sure you've heard of that event. It's recorded in the other Gospels where Jesus goes up on the mountain with some disciples and they see him glorified. Moses and Elijah show up and start talking to Jesus. Well, there's something in the Gospel of Luke the other Gospels don't have that really help describe and help us understand what is going on in this Gospel. Because in the conversation with Moses and Elijah, Jesus talks about Exodus. And what seems to come very clear is that with Moses, there was an exodus, a freeing of the people from Egypt to come and turn to a new place. And Jesus is implying that in his coming, there's going to be a new exodus. People will be freed from where they have been, and they will now have the ability to go to a new place. And when you read the book, the Gospel of Luke, from that lens, you see that over and over again, Jesus is with people who normally were thought of to be on the fringes of society. They were the people that would not even be recognized or looked at. Um, They were like these lepers almost. They had to yell out they were coming so you could scatter and go the other direction. See, in the coming of of Jesus, there is a, a new freedom. There is a completeness, a wholeness to our life that is now available. Now, you can recognize there is something kind of special and unique about Jesus, but what it takes is this willingness to come and acknowledge in the coming of Jesus, there's a new exodus. There's a new freedom from those ruts we've been traveling in. 
In the coming of Jesus, there is a completeness that is brought to my life when I acknowledge that this power is coming from beyond myself. This is the the power from the creator of the universe that is being released to my life. It is hard to turn. You know, it's not it's not just our, our region, but it's our lives in, in general. You know, we we've developed these pathways. And we're we're locked into them. We we almost feel like we're enslaved to them. Uh, we recognize that another direction would be probably healthier for us in a very deep way. We would maybe discover completeness and wholeness in a new way, but, but we, we are challenged to acknowledge, to turn and acknowledge the very real presence of the Creator God and the power that's available that goes beyond the bounds of this earth. Because when we're willing to turn and make that kind of acknowledgement, we receive healing that's that completes, that's a wholeness that flows within our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.